one thing to think about is for me what was really helpful because be prior to coming here uh, I taught as a graduate student at Indiana University and I had smaller classes I always taught much smaller classes the largest class I taught prior to coming here was 40 and so teaching a class of 200 was a, a large leap and I had a fundamental decision point at that point wh which was do I try to change everything that I do um, in order to teach a larger class which I had no idea how to teach or should I just try to teach this like I would teach a class of 40 or 30 or 20 and so that's the route I took I, I decided I'm going to approach the class of 200 as if there were only 20 students in here with respect to types of activities that I might try to do well then you quickly run into constraints like the seats are bolted down to the floor um, and usually in the class of 20 you could have students arrange into groups much more easily so what, I've, what I will do is request breakout rooms for my large classes or just have students sit on the furniture in a way that it's not intended for them to sit. Um, so we try not to let the environmental constraints get in the way of good teaching and learning. And so I have them break into small groups or use breakout rooms so that we can have a class of 200 divided across three larger classrooms so they have more space to work in small groups, particularly when they're doing simulations and so on. And I found that by treating it in that way, by genuinely trying to connect like I would if it was only 20, 30, or 40 students, that I've actually been able to figure out ways in which to make that class very similar to the classes that were much smaller that I used to teach um, and not compromise the kind of teaching and interactions that um, I would if I just decided to stand and deliver a more traditional lecture format.